Today, we're going to start a short unit on the probabilistic method. What we'll see today won't seem to have too much to do with algorithms at first, but we'll connect these to algorithmic ideas later. The probabilistic method is a technique in combinatorics. The basic idea is the following. Suppose we want to know, does some object C exist? Here, maybe C is some object like a graph with some particular property. I want to know if there exists a graph with this property. The probabilistic method at its core is the following. First, we define some random variable x. Second, we show that the probability that x is equal to C, this object that we want to know exists, is strictly greater than zero. If we could do this, then this implies that C exists. This doesn't sound very impressive at first, but perhaps surprisingly, this very simple idea can be used to prove some really deep statements. The probabilistic method was pioneered by Erdős starting in the 1940s, and by now there's a very rich theory around it. We are only going to scratch the surface here. If you want to learn more, I highly recommend this great book by Alon and Spencer. As a first example of the probabilistic method, we're going to look at Ramsey numbers. So to define Ramsey numbers, we need to define two colorings of the complete graph, and we need to define monochromatic k cliques. So what are these objects? First, let's define a k clique. A k clique is a set of k vertices that are all connected to each other. So for example, this is a three clique, also known as a triangle. This is a four clique, a five clique, and so on. I'm going to use the notation k sub n to denote the clique on n vertices. So this is k sub three, this is k four, this is k five, and so on. Next, what is a two coloring of the complete graph? Here's a definition by example. Let's say we're looking at the complete graph on four vertices. A two coloring of the complete graph means that I'm just going to color every edge one of two colors, let's say either red or blue. So maybe I'll color this edge blue, this edge blue, this edge blue, and the remaining edges will be red. So now I've colored every single edge that I could possibly have on these four vertices, either red or blue. And I say that this is a two coloring of the complete graph on four vertices, also known as K4. As one more quick example, here's another four coloring. So now we know what a two coloring of the complete graph is. What is a monochromatic K clique? Well, we already said what a K clique was. Monochromatic just means all the same color. So either all blue or all red. So for example, in this graph, this here is a monochromatic three clique, a monochromatic triangle. On the other hand, in this coloring here, there is no monochromatic three clique. Now that we've seen all these definitions, we can define Ramsey numbers. We'll ask the question, how many vertices n do you need before there must be a monochromatic k clique? So for example, for k equals three, we could say, must there be a monochromatic three clique, a monochromatic triangle on n equals three vertices? The answer is of course, no. Uh, for example, here's a coloring which has no monochromatic triangle. Therefore, there needn't be a monochromatic triangle. How about for four vertices? Also no. For example, here's one. No monochromatic triangle there. How about five vertices? To make sure you have the hang of what's going on, why don't you try to pause the video now and see if you can color all of the edges in the complete graph on five vertices so that there is no monochromatic triangle. Okay, great, so you probably found one. Uh, here's one, for example. Okay, so there needn't be a monochromatic triangle when n equals five either. How about for n equals six? Once again, pause the video and try to color all of the edges between six vertices and see if you can avoid having a monochromatic triangle. Okay, so perhaps you failed to find one. In fact, that's not an accident. There is no way to color the complete graph on six vertices so as to avoid a monochromatic triangle. This leads us to the definition of Ramsey numbers. 
we say that the smallest number n, so that there must be a monochromatic k clique, is the kth Ramsey number. In this example, it turns out that r3 is equal to 6. 6 is the smallest number, so that any two coloring of the complete graph on six vertices must have a monochromatic triangle. If you wanted to prove this rigorously, uh, well, I guess you could try all of the things. You could check all 2 to the 6 choose 2, which is 2 to the 15 possible colorings, uh, or maybe you could find a better way. It turns out that in general this is a pretty hard problem. For small numbers it's okay, like for r1 is trivially 1, r2 is trivially 2. I just told you that r3 was equal to 6. It turns out that r4 is equal to 18, although this is quite obnoxious to prove. We don't actually know what r5 is, it's somewhere between 43 and 48. And for larger k, it gets worse and worse. For example, our best estimates on r10 is that it's at least 798, and at most, 23,556. Here's a quote I like from Joel Spencer's 10 Lectures on the Probabilistic Method that just about sums it up. Quote, Erdős asks us to imagine an alien force vastly more powerful than us landing on Earth and demanding the value of R5 or they will destroy our planet. In that case, he claims, we should marshal all our computers and all our mathematicians and attempt to find the value. But suppose instead that they ask for R6. In that case, he believes, we should attempt to destroy the aliens. So figuring out what Ramsey numbers are is pretty tricky. Even though it's a hard problem to compute Ramsey numbers exactly, we can get some bounds via the probabilistic method. We're going to prove this theorem, that the kth Ramsey number is larger than 2 to the k over 2, and smaller than 2 to the 2k. These are not super sharp bounds. For example, these pin down R5 between 6 and 1024. However, it does establish that the dependence on k better be exponential. Let's start by proving this first inequality, that rk is bigger than 2 to the k over 2. To prove this, we need to show that there is a coloring on n equal to 2 to the k over 2 vertices with no monochromatic k clique. To prove this, we're going to use the probabilistic method. So let's say that n is equal to 2 to the k over 2, and let's imagine coloring a graph, the complete graph, on n vertices at random. That is, for every edge, I'm going to flip a coin. If the coin is heads, I'll color it blue. If the coin is tails, I'll color it red. Then, the probability that a given set of k vertices is monochromatic is equal to 1 half to the k choose 2 minus 1. This is because for the first edge, we can choose whatever we want, either blue or red, and then for the remaining k choose 2 minus 1 edges, they all have to agree with the first edge, and the probability of that happening is 1 half to the that number of edges. Thus, by the union bound, the probability that there exists a monochromatic k clique is at most n choose k times that probability, 1 half to the k choose 2 minus 1, which is then at most n to the k divided by k factorial, this is just a bound on the binomial coefficient here, times that probability, which I'm going to write as 2 to the minus k squared over 2, plus k over 2, plus 1. This is just expanding out the definition of this k choose 2 here. Now we can use the fact that n is equal to 2 to the k over 2, and we see that we get a 2 to the k squared over 2 term here, which conveniently cancels with this 2 to the minus k squared over 2 term here, and this all simplifies to be equal to 2 to the 1 plus k over 2 divided by k factorial. And the important thing about this quantity is that it is strictly less than 1, at least for k greater than or equal to 3. So now we're done. This statement here implies that the probability that there does not exist a monochromatic k clique is strictly greater than 0, and in particular, there must exist a coloring with no monochromatic k clique. This is what we wanted to show, so this establishes this direction of the theorem. 
Now let's move on to the next direction. We want to show that rk is less than 2 to the 2k. That is, that any coloring on n which is greater than or equal to 2 to the 2k vertices must have a monochromatic k clique. We're going to prove this by induction. To help us out, here's another definition. Let's let r sub rb denote the minimal number n so that the complete graph on n vertices either has a red r clique or a blue b clique. With this notation, I claim that r sub rb is at most r sub r minus 1b plus r sub rb minus 1 plus 1. To see why, suppose that n is equal to r sub r minus 1b plus r sub rb minus 1 plus 1. And let's imagine pulling one of these n vertices off to the side, doesn't matter which one, some special vertex, and then the remaining n minus 1 vertices are all over here somewhere. Then our special vertex has a bunch of blue edges coming out of it. Here they are. And let's say that the vertices that they touch are called S sub B. Our special vertex also has some red edges coming out of it. And let's say that the vertices that they touch are called S sub R. So notice that S sub R and S sub B make up between them the remaining n minus 1 vertices. In other words, the size of S sub R plus S sub B is equal to n minus 1, which by the definition of n is equal to R sub R minus 1 B plus R sub R B minus 1. This implies that either S sub R is greater than or equal to R sub R minus 1 B, or S sub B is greater than or equal to R sub R B minus 1. Indeed, if neither of these were true, then this couldn't possibly hold. Let's suppose that it's this one. That is, that S sub R is larger than R sub R minus 1 B. If this is the case, then by the definition of R sub R minus 1 B, either S sub R has a blue B clique, or S sub R has a red R minus 1 clique. So suppose it's this case, that S sub R has a blue B clique. Well, in that case, the whole graph has a blue B clique. On the other hand, if it's this case, that S sub R has a red R minus 1 clique, let's say that it's over here, so here's our red R minus 1 clique, then actually the whole graph is going to contain a red R clique. That is, we just take this little r minus 1 clique and we add in this other vertex. And by definition, it's connected to all of the vertices in this r minus 1 clique using red edges. Therefore, either the whole graph G has a blue B clique, or G has a red R clique. Now we've just shown that any graph on n vertices, this many vertices, must have either a blue B clique or a red R clique. So by definition, that means that R sub RB is at most that number of vertices. So this proves the claim. Check. Now we're going to use this claim to prove this inequality, that R sub K is less than 2 to the 2K. And we're going to do this by induction. So let's suppose by induction that r sub rb is strictly less than 2 to the r plus b for all r plus b less than or equal to c. We're going to do induction on c. So I'll leave it to you guys to check the base case, for example, when c equals 3. Now suppose that r plus b is equal to c plus 1, assuming this inductive hypothesis. We have r sub rb by the claim from the previous slide is at most r sub r minus 1 b plus r sub r b minus 1 plus 1. And now my induction, this thing is strictly less than 2 to the r plus b minus 1. This thing is also strictly less than 2 to the r plus b minus 1. Another way of saying that is that each of them is less than or equal to 2 to the r plus b minus 1 minus 1. So we'll just write that out. 
and add on this last plus one from here. But now this simplifies nicely. One of these minus ones cancels with this plus one, and these two things just sum together to be two to the r plus b. So this is equal to two to the r plus b minus one, which indeed is strictly less than two to the r plus b. So by induction, we conclude that r sub rb is strictly less than two to the r plus b for all r and b. In particular, this holds when both r and b are equal to k. So we have r sub k comma k, which is also just known as r sub k, is strictly less than two to the two k, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So now we've proved this inequality as well. This completes the proof of the whole theorem. Now we know that the kth Ramsey number, r sub k, is bigger than two to the k over two and less than two to the two k. To recap, in this video, we introduced the probabilistic method. The basic idea is that if something exists with positive probability, then it exists. We also saw a first example of the probabilistic method with Ramsey numbers. We proved bounds on Ramsey numbers using the probabilistic method. These bounds weren't especially tight, but doing much better than that is a really hard open question. Okay, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.